In 2022, Todrick Hall qualified to be on the reality show Celebrity Big Brother due to his status as a choreographer and chart-topping recording artist who has been featured on Broadway, The West End, and RuPaul's Drag Race. So basically, there's a good chance the cisgender heterosexual men in your family have no idea who I'm talking about. Todrick Hall! You know, he's work besties with Taylor Swift. He did that one club song with four words that they play at every Pride Parade. Ugh, those are all gay things too. Uh, he was in a Super Bowl commercial for Eminem. No, even Candy is gay. And so is the Super Bowl because they're all wearing jock straps. In any case, another accomplishment from Todrick's resume is being called out on multiple occasions for some shady business practices and personal interactions. All of which bubbled back up to the surface during his one month of being watched 24 hours a day on the Big Brother live stream. So today I'm explaining all of this Todrick Hall drama that led him to miss out on the grand prize and return home to find the hashtag Todrick Exposed party trending on Twitter. Twitter. From the too personal trash talk to exhausting overshares to his hideous home decorations that alienated absolutely everybody except for his solitaire partner, join me for a 1984 inspired installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is a playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other content from the web. And we break them down like a person who has just been exposed on the internet to look at each clip and say yes or no, no. My friend told me I should do a video on this topic because I was explaining the drama to the uninitiated. And I thought, okay, maybe others can use this sort of rundown as well. But before we get started, Started, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more drama clip breakdowns like this. Am I the drama? Am I the villain? I don't know why this eye is red. I guess that part of me is slowly dying. Don't worry, the rest of the body will catch up in time. So I would say the first thing I noticed about Todrick Hall through watching these clips of him on Big Brother, a show I don't really watch regularly, is that he doesn't always seem to know when he's coming off incorrectly. I think a lot of people were caught off guard by him telling Lamar Odom that his murdered friend would have been better off being tortured. You just watch, see if that's what you got from this. Today, Lamar was like, one of my friends got shot before I came here. I was like, that's so sad. I'm so sorry. And I was like, you know, I just think when people do that, I wonder if, if they're thinking, of, like, if they're trying to get revenge on that person, like, shooting them out of nowhere and killing them only really affects their family. It doesn't, they're gone in two seconds. Can it be better to torture that person that you didn't like if you wanted to get at them, but going up to them and shooting them out of nowhere, they don't even realize they were shot by you you didn't really you know whatever i was trying to explain that point I think you're actually trying to over explain that point. You know, the one about how murderers would experience more mental satisfaction if they became torturers instead? Good looking out, I guess, for people who consider either of those things a solution to their problem. When I really do mental gymnastics, I think what Todrick was probably trying to say is that murder is a really senseless act of violence that creates a ripple effect harming all of society, except funnily enough, the deceased person. I don't think that's a great shower thought to share with someone who who just told you they know someone close to them got tragically murdered. Like I didn't hear that about Lamar Odom's friend and then instantly put myself into the perspective of the killer to workshop more painful, drawn out revenge scenarios. That's not good comforting. So Todrick seems confused that Lamar did not take this conversation as it was intended. He was like, well, torture is like, you know, why would you even say that? Like, why would you say that? I was like, well, the point was that like, I'm saying like, if you're trying to get over on that person and like if you were to like want to be mad at Lamar and then you shoot Lamar and he's like why would you say something about me shooting someone I was like, it was just like a hypothetical situation. Which leads me to wonder, could you have somehow found a way to console this grieving person without dreaming up new torture devices from a Saw movie? Todrick said, I'm so sorry for the loss of your friend. Have you tried picturing them being tortured? Hmm? No? Well, have you tried picturing yourself being tortured? Okay, now picture both of you being tortured together. All right, well, I'm out of ideas. I don't know what to tell you. So whatever. I don't think it's enough to cancel somebody because they don't know how to talk to somebody when they say somebody they know has passed. That's a hard thing to do, but mama, that was not it. I'll say that much. Moving right along, Todrick spills some tea about how he conducts his personal business, particularly creating specialized, personalized video shout outs on a certain app. Well, how much did you charge? 
I charge different rates, like throughout. Like sometimes it's one hundred fifty dollars, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's twenty five dollars. Just oh, wow. depends on how I feel that day, how much energy I have. Wow, I always wondered what the lime skittle was doing ever since Green Apple took their place, and I guess they do tarot card readings now. Although it sounds like they charge a lot on certain days. I'm just kidding. Todrick is talking here about making cameos, and for those who don't know, that's an app where people can request videos, greetings from like their favorite celebrities. From watching these clips with Todrick, it becomes very clear that he's passionate about playing games on Big Brother with his pricing strategy on Cameo, and of course, the fervent games of solitaire that he focuses on like it's the future crimes computer in Minority Report. Look at his focus. Oh, wow. But I promote it a lot. And I like have it down to a science. I hope people aren't seeing this, but. I'm not sure how Todrick was unaware that people spend every waking moment watching and recording these live feeds. Didn't you read the book that the title of this reality show is named after? I already assume that I'm getting recorded 24 seven for government surveillance and they're just choosing not to broadcast it on CBS for some reason. Probably because I wear nipple tassels under my clothes at all times. So they just don't know what to expect. Have you ever seen Nikki D's shower time cabaret. Oh, it's too hot for TV, mama. Because I use scalding hot water. Blister. Okay, people really had a laugh at Todrick being like, I hope people aren't seeing this while the whole world is like, What's interesting and unique about this situation is that Todrick was live getting read for all of these things he was saying while sequestered for the show. So he wasn't aware of any of this backlash from his fellow contestants who were eliminated or us watching at home until he got eliminated in second place, at which time he canceled all of his press interviews. <laughs> so, you know, it caught up. I don't make it too personalized because I do so many of them, mm -hmm. so many thousands of them. So I'll be like, hi, Cynthia, it's Todrick Hall. Um, um, and your good friend Carson told me it's your birthday. And so I wanted to wish you a very happy, very special 55th birthday. Thank you so much for watching my videos and listening to my music. It means the world to me. So Cynthia, hope you got your nails, hair, hips and heels on, honey, because today is all about you. Aww. Happy birthday, my love. And I hope to see you soon. And I literally say that exact same thing. Oh, okay. Every time. Yeah. There's a birthday. Hey Cynthia, it's me, Nick Duramio, and I just heard from the severed head in my basement jar that tomorrow is the eve of your release from prison. It means so much to me that you've had my supernatural manifesto tattooed onto your body. And of course, I so appreciate you streaming my crazed ramble sessions on Spotify. So Cynthia, I hope you have on your hails, hips, nails, tits, lick that because today is all about you. I adapted his script somewhat because I feel that's a little more in line with what my cameo requests are. Oh yeah, I'm on cameo too. And honestly, I can't make fun of Todrick for having a scripted response on there because ever since I started doing cameos, I've also developed this weird way of starting each video that sort of drives me crazy. Hi Genevieve, it's me, Nick. Hi Jeanette, it's me, Nick. Hi Patricia, it's me, Nick. Hi Elliot, it's me, Nick. Okay, they know your first name is Nick. Nick, dumb they're the ones who ordered the cameo. They're paying you to try to figure out how to say the second part. I pronounce it Duramio, by the way. You can have that one for free. A little free cameo here on YouTube. Ugh. The first piece of drama that I became aware of with Todrick Hall was back in 2018 and 19 maybe, where a Drag Race contestant Manila Luzon, as well as another dancer who worked with Todrick Hall, both corroborated each other's stories about not being paid on time for different appearances or music video work they did with Todrick. Then there were other kind of accounts on Reddit and other places where people agreed that he was not organized when it came to compensating people or that he would ask people to volunteer their time even though he would stand to make hundreds of thousands of dollars from the music videos themselves. Todrick decides to really focus in on the Manila Luzon portion of it, claiming that she had no right to jump in and pile on on Twitter. Probably would have been smart to not bring up something from 2019 all the way now, but okay. Never not paid someone for something I told them I was gonna pay them for and she was like, well, you still haven't paid me from this Halloween party that I hosted last year. And I was like infuriated because I don't throw parties. It's not something that I've ever done. That's not a part of my like brand. Like I'm not a party or whatever. Okay, everyone hold the f up. Am I allowed to have throwing parties as a core aspect of my brand? That's what I'm gonna do. Although like Todrick, I will not be paying anybody to attend except for the Domino's delivery driver, but he's not getting a tip unless he sits and listens to one hour of karaoke show tunes. Uh oh, sound like the Todrick Hall of ordering pizzas. I don't really even know who Todrick is trying to defend himself to here. If he thinks that it's only a one on one, like again, he doesn't seem to be thinking that anyone's gonna see this. Although to me, I'm like, I mean, he kind of seems like he's trying to explain himself to a captive 
captive audience, which he is, if he knew people were watching the live feeds, and he said he's a fan of the show. So I almost doubt that he didn't know he was bringing this stuff up. I think it just wasn't received the right way, but who knows? This is the point where Todrick tries to somehow excuse any money he might have owed anybody, and he does so by saying that he has a friend in common with Manila's late partner, who was also a drag queen named Sahara Davenport. It was $800 or $600 she was owed. It wasn't some like yeah. crazy amount of money. And if I owed her the money, it wouldn't, to me, wouldn't be worth it like because of like our relationship with her ex who by the way like passed away. Yeah, I can't pinpoint the exact moment that Todrick should have stopped talking, but it was at least two or three sentences ahead of using someone's deceased partner as the mic drop statement in an unrelated argument. We need to be clear though, Todrick is not saying that he actually owed anybody money here. He's simply pointing out that if he did, it should be forgiven because he knew Manila's partner, who I guess would have liked being defrauded out of $800. Eh, that explanation doesn't make it sound any better or worse, just longer. Todrick talks for so long that I started mentally untangling that forest of computer cables in the Big Brother house out of boredom. I don't watch this show, so you'll have to tell me, is one of the challenges that they're all learning computer network maintenance at the University of Phoenix? Zip ties, get them zip ties, this is on TV. The shadiest thing anyone's ever done to me, like we're both minorities. I was like, why would you like try to kick me when I'm down? People in this world, they could be like, Todrick owes me money and he took, it took him six months to pay me and I'd be like, that's fair. I mean, it doesn't sound totally fair, especially not to those people who have had to wait six months or longer to be reimbursed for their bus fare, all while Todrick is online posting videos about how he's customized his mansion to look like the county fair. Maybe I'm not interpreting what Todrick said correctly, but it sounds like he's admitting that there are people from his past who he hasn't paid on time, but these two people who are calling him out for it publicly are lying, either because they're desperate for attention or because they are betraying him as a fellow minority. And again, is it part of the challenge for them to rehash old Twitter drama that could have been left dead? I'm just wondering. It's a bold choice, if not. You know, with all of this celebrity Big Brother drama, a lot of people are saying Todrick Hall should be officially canceled in a court of law. But I'll tell you one thing that has no risk of cancellation in my house, and that is my subscription to Every Plate. Every Plate is a sponsor of today's video, and if you haven't heard, I'm about to tell you the best value meal kit in America. The more I've seen, the pricing of some other competitors, those brands are charging a huge markup. Every plate will allow you to make these delicious meals for yourself without breaking the bank. There are days when I don't even know where the time goes. So the thought of cooking a full-fledged meal used to intimidate me, but that's why every plate is perfect for me. All of their recipes come together in 20 to 30 minutes. And just because every plate is a great value, it doesn't mean you lose the customization options. You can swap out proteins, veggies, side dishes to your liking. The cost of one meal from every plate is about the same as a cup of coffee. And now when I unbox my every plate deliveries, I'm so excited to see what beautiful recipes they're gonna teach me. I love not going to the grocery store, ever. Try every plate for just $1.79 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering code NICDORAMIO179. Now let's get back to someone who might be canceled, but what does cancellation mean these days? We don't know. I would say the one that weirds me out the most is how Todrick took a detail from a traumatizing story that a fellow competitor, Shanna Mo she's a model, had told about a home invasion and threw it back in her face during an argument. This clip shows a fellow celebrity Big Brother contestant, Carson Kressley, discussing the statement and then a flashback to Todrick using it in the argument. Okay, when, when she I, left. Oh, yes. You remembered immediately. Oh, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, you went there? Like, cause she was saying it was like one of, you know, the most painful and like, terrible things. And he came over to my window and tapped on yeah. the glass and said, too hard on me. Don't worry, Todrick. I'll get the jury to vote against you. Don't be too hard on me now. Todrick, it's really not necessary to quote someone's attacker to get the last word in an argument. Although it does earn you points for creativity if you're a James Bond villain writing a monologue. I'm glad that this type of verbal warfare didn't make it into your cameo script because I really don't think that's the type of thing people are willing to pay five to $2,000 for depending on how gracious you feel that day. Also, this is not the type of like, that's crazy. Who would even think to quote the thing that a home invader knocked on and said in your window at night to like, 
get the laugh in an art, like that's a lot. And certainly not the type of behavior you would expect to see from someone who decorates their home like it's Disney Springs. It, like his whole house looks like a store for kids. This is not even related to Big Brahma, Big Brahma. This is not related to the drama in particular, but it is a video Todrick posted in the past showing us a tour of his mansion. And I just want you to see it. This is one of my favorite rooms in the entire house. When I grew up, I loved the Disney VHS from the 90s. I used to collect these all the time. And so these are all of my Disney VHS's. And the coolest part is that the VHS's are actually still inside the cases. Well, it's important to remember that taste is subjective. Clearly, Todrick is what some would call a maximalist. And that sort of interior design really crashes with my affinity for not having a million little crevices around my house to collect dust and poop particles. You don't have poop particles in your house floating all around? Surprise, yes you do. <laughs> I bet you whoever Todrick pays to clean his house came in one day and was like, uh, so I saw a 25 year old using command strips to glue all your eBay purchases to the wall. So can you spot me on this eight foot ladder I have to climb up on to clean those? I would really hate to Swiffer Duster bust my ass trying to wipe off your VHS jacket for recess, school's out. Did you even like that movie, Todrick? I don't know if you know, but Todrick's favorite movie in the world is The Wizard of Oz. If you didn't know, just take a look in his bedroom. I had this really cool guy, Matt Sokoler, create a custom bed that looks like Dorothy's house from The Wizard of Oz has crashed into the wizard's chamber. There's like little poppies down here. The Wicked Witch of the East's feet are sticking out with replicas of Judy Garland's ruby slippers. Replicas? You mean those aren't the authentic ruby slippers used by Judy Garland in the movie? Why are there things on the floor for that close up? He hired a camera person for this. I would be like, can you blow on that so the sequence fly away? Do you know how many frustrated minutes I spent picking up tiny bell pepper seeds and loose cheese for this every plate sponsorship? It's a common mistake for newer camera operators, I would say, to rely on that little tiny LCD screen on the back of your camera. I promise you that is never gonna spill the full tea regarding on set debris. And obviously a pair of cheap shoes is gonna get all up when they are protruding out from under the bed into your bedroom attached to a pair of corpse legs. Do you wanna get out of bed every morning and be instantly tripped by a mannequin? And again, everybody can be into their own thing, but for me, this type of room with like that strong of a theming related to intellectual property that you didn't create kind of reminds me of Trading Spaces, that show on TLC where they used to be like, you like movies? So we created a 1950s old Hollywood room. I'd be like, I don't want it. Oh, and Todrick, he loves talking about Wizard of Oz but you know a lot of his Wizard of Oz fandom was sparked by Wicked, which let's be honest, Wicked is a better piece of writing than Wizard of Oz. Just saying, Wizard of Oz is a kid's book. I was able to talk to the producers of Wicked and get the original costumes worn by Kristen Chenoweth, Adina Menzel's original El Popa costume. I'm sorry, but if those costumes are so special, then why do you store them in your master bathroom? You've got Glinda as the literal gatekeeper of what is clearly an actively used walk-in shower. Have you heard of mildew at all? I'll also, it would be creepy for me having a green painted mannequin watch me shower. It's a little jarring to go from shaving off all your pubic hair and then stepping out into curtain call for the matinee at Gershwin Theater. Todrick didn't even want mannequins at first. He wanted actual Broadway understudies to be forced to live in this room full time, but they wouldn't show up when he refused to pay them. You're so addicted to theming your room after Wicked and Wizard of Oz that you had to like put museum costumes and archive pieces pieces in the bathroom. He has words on the ceiling. I don't like it. Okay, so that's the level of weird customization that Todrick is doing to his house during quarantine when he's also being accused of not paying dancers like six to $800. So that's gonna be frustrating to some people. Also, he starts talking about someone else's child who left the house. Chris Kirkpatrick was also a contestant on this season. And after he had left, Todrick is recounting something kind of rude that he said to Chris about his family. You betrayed us and I was like, and your son, when he sees this, is not gonna be proud of you. Like, you said you wanted to be a good example for your wife and your son, you have embarrassed them. And if your son saw this, he would be like, you, you betrayed your team, daddy. <laughs> Okay, I already didn't like what you were saying, but once you started doing an impression of a child saying daddy is really when I fell off the boat. Not only is it a big swing to put words in the mouth of someone else's child, it's also kind of the easiest way to push a normal person in the opposite direction of whatever you're trying to make them do. I think if you're really gonna be manipulative about it, wouldn't you be like more, just think about what your child's gonna think and, and vote in a way that will make them proud. I know you will. But Todrick is over here like, if you don't put my name in 
in the goblet of fire or whatever. Your kid said he wants to move out and come live with me in my cluttered Chuck E. Cheese nightmare house. But I guess we can't expect subtle social tactics like that from someone who's painted their home in murals like you would see in a school play and has garbage stuck to the wall with ticky tacky. But I didn't know that it was on a personal level. He's trying to say I'm mean, I'm a bad person. Like there's no way that I'm just playing Jekyll and Hyde and being nice to everyone and then walking into a room and specifically being mean to him. That's exactly right. There are actually several people in this house you've been targeting and also people outside the house who I don't know why you're even mentioning it. When Big Brother gets down to the final two, to the eliminated roommates or housemates all get to vote on which of the final two contestants take home the $250,000 grand prize. Most of the eliminated contestants have had a chance to watch Todrick on these live feeds and all but one have seen him be really shady. And you can actually see the bewilderment in his face when people start making comments that he knows are to him. One of your favorite movies is Wizard of Oz but you've forgotten that we could see behind the curtain. So I'm gonna choose the less, the lesser of two evils. Okay, nobody laugh. Maybe she comes from a culture where that would be considered a serve. She fumbled through that sentence and jammed a key into some poster board, but Todrick is still gasping for air because someone used a Wizard of Oz metaphor against him? That movie is his own mother, it seems like. Up comes Carson, very diplomatic. Uh, and I'm gonna go with the person who I thought worked it just a little bit harder. I think we could have cut this finale down to a half hour if someone over at CVS had the forethought to lube up those keyholes. Trying to go in dry while the camera's on? That's a sure sign of disaster. Carson, I know you know better. Don't you at least have some hand lotion in that clutch of yours? We're gonna be here all night with these cheap key props. Next up, Lamar Odom. Again, they're all trying to be really ambiguous th with these speeches and it's so ambiguous that I'm like, hmm? So, um, I just got a tattoo this morning. And I'm going to go with the person that most resembles that type of mentality. His new tattoo is a picture of the Trix rabbit. So we're still trying to figure out what kind of mentality that is. I guess he's calling Todrick a yogurt thief. Whatever, jam that key in your TV hole, Lamar. Time to pay off that tattoo. Todd here gives us one of the most pointed remarks at Todrick. Everything was great up until I saw the live feeds. And I hope you realize that playing this game and winning is definitely doing it a good way and not talking bad about people that are already gone. Thank you, Todd. See, that's someone who knows how to get a key in a hole with no problem. And he had the confidence to address the fact that seeing Todrick's behavior on the live feeds has influenced his vote. Where everyone else definitely stayed a little more neutral about it or tried to blame it on what their tattoo thought. Here's the last contestant who ends up being the only person who does vote for Todrick. And that might just be because she was eliminated so late in the competition that she didn't get a chance to see any of his shady behavior. Although that's, you know, she says that it's actually because he was really helpful to her through the game. I'm going to vote for the person that helped me navigate when I really didn't understand really how the show really worked. Okay, so we know she's not voting for me because I still don't really know how the show really works. Is Julie Chen the big brother? And is that who we blame for making this studio look like the front of a Catholic megachurch? I believe Valspar calls this brown and beige color combination Disciples Robe. I'm glad that the winner of this show gets $250,000 because it seems like everybody else only gets aggravation. And I'm including myself, the audience, in that that statement. If the point of this show is to be nice to your roommates so that they vote for you and you win, it probably would have been helpful for someone to tell Todrick that because that ship set sail on him back when he started admitting he didn't like paying invoices on time. Anyway, did you hear about all of this on Twitter or the internet? What do you think? Is this a deal breaker for you and Todrick or is it just like maybe get an accountant so that you don't have to worry about mailing out your own checks? You tell me in the comments below. Also give this video a big thumbs up if you want even more reality show break downs like this but most importantly if you're new to my channel I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here that way you never miss new videos from me I upload two new ones every week so turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I'm voting for the new head of household which is a big brother thing also I've got merch available and a patreon where you can access exclusive benefits like virtual watch parties and bonus videos every month you guys are all the greatest thank you for putting your key in my hole today I will see you next time